Hello and welcome back again to the SmackDown vs. Raw 2007 GM Mode Series. Today I am bringing you Judgment Day, the first pay-per-view on our road to becoming the best general manager in WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2007 history. So if you guys are hyped for today's episode, uh, please be sure to smash that like button and subscribe. And without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on into it. I'm pretty sure... I remember correctly that I went ahead and set this card up ahead of time so that way we could just jump right in let me make sure it's all still set up properly okay so I put CM Punk versus Gregory Helms because I wanted to continue the rivalry uh, Punk is hurt if I remember correctly so that's why I just made it a regular singles match um, then we have a battle royal to determine the next contender for the world heavyweight championship depending on who wins tonight's main event. Uh, they could be facing Bobby Lashley, Rob Van Dam, who's been on a heater lately, uh, Jeff Hardy, or Batista. Um, following that, we've got Chavo Guerrero versus The Undertaker, and uh, the rivalry got so heated that Rey Mysterio got involved. Uh, so now tonight, he will be the special guest referee. Um, will he call it straight down the line? Will he call it for his friend The Undertaker? Or will he call it for his friend's nephew, Chavo? We will see. Um, <clears throat> the United States Championship is going to be on the line tonight in a hardcore triple threat match. We've got Edge versus Matt Hardy versus Eddie Guerrero, who stamped his ticket to this match last week on SmackDown when he won a tables match between the three of these men. Um, following that, we've got an elimination table tag team match. Uh, for the WWE Tag Team Championships, it's going to be D-Generation X versus Shelton Benjamin and Kurt Angle. And finally, rounding out the night, as promised, uh, Steve Austin will get Randy Orton in the Hell in a Cell, and it will be for the World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, Austin wanted this style of match because he didn't want a way for Orton to get away from him. So let's, without further ado, confirm this match card and jump right in. So we're going to go ahead and simulate the CM Punk vs. Gregory Helms match because we did watch this last week. Gregory Helms picking up another victory and walking away with the Cruiserweight Championship. I kind of want to watch this Battle Royal. I'm going to watch th three or four matches on this card because I usually watch two matches, but this is a pay-per-view and uh, I want it to be a little bit more special. So we'll go ahead and watch Bobby Lashley versus RVD versus Jeff Hardy versus Batista in a battle royal over the top rope to see who the next number one contender for the World Heavyweight Champion is going to be. All right, and all four men have entered the ring. Now let's get to this match and see who our new number one contender is going to be. Remember, this is an over-the-top rope battle royal. The only rules are that uh, you get eliminated by being thrown over the top rope, much like the Royal Rumble. I've got to, I've got to imagine Batista and Bobby Lashley probably have the biggest advantage here, being that they're behemoths when it comes to size. You know, they, they've got the the size advantage on lock in this match. Both RVD and uh, Jeff Hardy about the same size themselves, uh, but much, much smaller than Batista and Bobby Lashley. RVD and Hardy, though, uh, I deciding right now at least to go after each other, let the big men fight. And that's probably a better move. RVD now, though, wanting to, oh, getting a little overzealous there. Jeff Hardy wasn't done with him. And a uh, standing scent on there. And a huge Hurricane Rana. Oh, maybe it's not over the top rope. Oh, wow. <laughs> RVD was almost pinned right there. I thought this was over the top rope, but I guess it's uh, pin submission. Um, so, I mean, that's that's pretty cool. Let's, let's see how it plays out. That makes this a little bit more fair for the, the high flyers here. That makes sense as to why nobody was trying to like send anybody over the top rope at the time. 
RVD putting those educated feet to good use. And then uh, Batista and Bobby Lashley uh, in another corner over here struggling. Uh, back and forth with one another, trying to get the upper hand. Batista with a chin lock. Looks like RVD was possibly reaching for Batista there first, and now he's going for him again. Ooh, big, big clothesline to take Batista down. And a, a backflip over Bobby Lashley's shoulder, possibly avoiding the back suplex. RVD, I was going to say, RVD needs to save that finisher if he wants to keep it. This, uh... As stated before, you know, this is the this is a very important match here. Uh, whoever wins this does go on to face the World Heavyweight Champion at our next pay-per-view. Batista now going to work on the back of RVD. Honestly, that might be their best bet with him and Jeff is to try and ground them as best they can. Jeff's a little more spunky, though. You know, he's he's not afraid to fight a little dirty, and obviously RVD's not either. He's the king of extreme. Well, he's on the Mount Rushmore of extreme wrestlers. We'll put it like that. Honestly, I feel like Terry Funk and, and Mick Foley are kind of the kings of extreme, but that's neither here nor there. RVD is definitely one of them, though. He's definitely in the top five. Batista now with a pin on Jeff. Jeff barely making it out. And RVD stealing Bobby Lashley's finisher, hitting him with a spear. But Batista stood Lashley right back up. That could have been a chance for Bobby Lashley to get eliminated. Big leg drop on Jeff. Jeff, as I stated before though, right before that spear, Jeff was almost pinned. The ref's hand hit the mat for the three. Lashley now with a finisher of his own. Ooh, but RVD with a big spinning drop kick. Ashley's a little too slippery there, and a big German suplex takes RVD down. Ooh! That was kind of like a tag team move there. In a sense, like, Bobby threw Jeff, and, and Jeff turned it into a spinning heel kick on Batista. Batista now trying to gain, gain a bit of momentum here at Jeff's expense. And a dominator dominating RVD. Batista could be looking for that Batista bomb any second now. <laughs> Big drop kick taking out RVD. Jeff looking for another one, but not finding the mark on Lashley. What does Batista have in mind here? Just trying to yank the the shoulder socket, uh, the shoulder out of socket rather, on Jeff Hardy there. Jeff now able to pick Batista up and hit him with a Widowmaker. All all four of these men feeling the effects of this match. Every one of them tired at this point. Hardy taking a Widowmaker for himself. Batista might be looking for the Batista bomb. That could be it for RVD. Here's the pin. One, two, three. RVD is the first man eliminated. And Jeff using that time to, to, to uh, heal, I guess, and uh, kick out of that pin. Or maybe he heard the ref counting RVD's pin and thought it was for him. Oh man, what a huge heel kick. Hardy realizing now that he is the last small man left in the ring. 
both of these uh, big behemoths having a, quite the upper hand on him. He might have wanted RVD to st stick around and maybe make, him, make it to the final two, you know? But here we are. Batista, Bobby Lashley, and Jeff Hardy. Some shoulder thrusts taking Hardy down. And now Batista mounting Hardy and just unleashing a flurry of punches. Hardy, though, quickly back to his feet. But he's feeling some, some looks like some pain in his rib area. Trying to catch his breath. Batista standing Lashley up and saying, Hey, this is the way you take care of this man. Batista, once again, looking for a Batista bomb, this time on Bobby Lashley. This could be Batista's second pin of the night. Bobby Lashley has been eliminated. Batista taking out both men so far in this match. Jeff Hardy left alone with the animal. Cranking Jeff Hardy's neck. Hardy fighting his heart out here tonight, but I don't know if he's got it in him to uh, finish a match against Batista with a win. This has essentially become a one-on-one -on -one match where neither man can get out the get out of the ring. So he's locked into this ring with Batista. Batista now going for it, looking for his third and possibly final Batista bomb of the night. Jeff is down. This could be it. One, two, three. Batista is going on to the next pay-per-view. Whoever wins tonight in, in our main event will have to face Batista at the next pay-per-view for the World Heavyweight Championship. What a big win for Batista. Wanting to make it to the main event once again in his career. Alrighty. <clears throat> Chavo Guerrero versus The Undertaker in a special referee match. I believe we would love to watch this. I want to see what Rey Mysterio has in mind for this match. Both The Undertaker and Chavo Guerrero have made it to the ring, and Rey Mysterio is down there ready to call this match. Let's jump right in. You can see all three men in the ring. Rey Mysterio decided not to wear a referee shirt tonight. He came in ring gear. Maybe he plans on getting involved in this match. Chavo kicking on The Undertaker, but not, not doing any damage. The Undertaker kind of just walking forward towards him. And that was a kick. Chavo might be small, but he's got strong legs. Rey Mysterio. Ooh, Chavo now chopping Rey Mysterio. You gotta watch out for these Guerrero men. They are slippery. They do know how to work the ins and outs of a match and work the ins and outs of a ref to to pick up a win. They lie, they cheat, they steal, but hey, at least they're honest about it. Rope break, looking for the rope break. Ray now counting. Chavo letting go at the count of four. Chavo actually taking kind of an early lead in this match here. He's not letting the Undertaker get very much offense in. And he's put the Undertaker in a couple of holds that have, have really been uh, kind of devastating. Not releasing that, that submission on the, uh, on the rope break. Holding it to the count of four. That's kind of him trying to send a message like, hey, you won't. You won't belittle me. I don't care who's in the ring with us right now. I don't care if he's your friend. He's my friend too. He's my uncle pretty much. Chavo now. With a finisher stored up. He could take advantage of this, of this point in time and... and Take the Undertaker down. Maybe 
maybe not pin him for a three, but at least send a message that, hey, I've got your number, man. We'll see how that plays out. Back and forth they go, though, exchanging reversals. Reversal after reversal, and Chavo finally taking The Undertaker down, putting him in a bit of a rear chin lock, and he's got his knee in his upper back, putting the pressure on in both spots, both the neck and upper back. Taker now back to his feet. Taker finally starting to get a little offense in here. Chavo trying to, I guess, work as best he can to try and take the big man down. Chavo now looking for his finisher potentially but he can't lift the Undertaker he couldn't lift the big man up that could pose a very very big issue for Chavo this Taker now tossing Chavo into the corner of the ring Rey Mysterio has been sitting in that in that turnbuckle area pretty much since the, uh, the he had to break up that rope break he yeah, hasn't been, that, that's just me pointing out that Ray has not been active in this match much, except for where he's called for. He's calling it down the middle so far. Undertaker with a huge DDT taking Chavo down. And Chavo with a kick in the groin uh, for The Undertaker. Uh, well, I, I was going to say for The Undertaker to uh, lose that momentum he was gaining, but it doesn't look like The Undertaker's losing any momentum. Another kick to the groin. Rey Mysterio not calling for the, the disqualification as that could have that could easily have drawn the disqualification. Chavo now with another finisher lined up. Taker sits up. Oh my goodness. That usually spells death for his opponents. Chavo able to lift the Undertaker this time. Down goes the Undertaker. This could be it, folks. Chavo looking for that pin. One. Two, three, oh my goodness, Chavo Guerrero has pinned The Undertaker at Judgment Day. What an upset. I gotta commend Rey Mysterio, he called it right down the middle. And there he is lifting Chavo's hand in victory over The Undertaker. Did you ever think we would ever see Chavo pick up a huge victory like this over The Undertaker? At a pay-per-view, no less. Here we are at match number four. The United States Championship is on the line in a hardcore, which means falls count anywhere, triple threat match. It's going to be Edge versus Matt Hardy versus Eddie Guerrero. All three men, seasoned competitors in the ring. All three men earned their spot here tonight. Let's give this a watch. All three men have entered the ring and... It is hardcore rules, which means anything goes. Uh, we've got Edge and Eddie Guerrero, both both men, keen on using weapons to pick up victories. So we will see if that happens here tonight. Um, and again, it is false count anywhere. So they could wrestle all the way up to the stage and pin each other up there. Also, Edge does not have champion, champion's advantage here tonight as Eddie Guerrero could pin Matt Hardy, much like he did last week when he put Matt Hardy through the table to earn his sh shot at this match. So that could be something we see here tonight. One man could pin another man and then Edge could be beltless for uh, not even being a part of the decision. So let's jump right into this match. There we see Edge, Matt, Eddie, all three competitors ready to go. The real rivalry here is between Matt Hardy and Edge. They've both been feuding over this belt uh, since the beginning of the season so far Eddie Guerrero kind of inserting himself in this match saying hey man I, I want a shot too I'm a former tag team champion I want a shot at this belt 
and he earned it. He had to he had to face both of these men last week on SmackDown in a tables match, and whoever won got to choose the third member of this match. Edge could have chosen to have our World Heavyweight Champion Randy Orton in this match to back him up. Matt Hardy could have had Jeff Hardy in this match to give give his brother a shot at the title with it. Not that I think Randy would have backed Edge up. As soon as Randy would have found a moment, he would have sunk his teeth in and become a double champion. But we don't have to live in either of those scenarios because Eddie Guerrero won his match last week after he DDT'd Matt Hardy through a table. Tonight, though, they will have to either be pinned or submitted, so Eddie's got to got to think about that. Yes, he can put them through tables, but that will not pick him up the victory in this style of match. Not immediately anyways. You know, he could put through somebody through he could put somebody through a table and pick up a pin. Edge looking strong early in this match. Wanting to defend that championship and keep it because he knows here tonight there is no Champion's advantage, he can't run out, grab a chair, smack somebody with it, and then leave still champion. Edge looking for an education early on Eddie Guerrero. Matt Hardy still back to his feet, though, so he... Oh, big DDT on Matt Hardy as well. <clears throat> Edge could go for a pin right here, uh, but he decides not to. He decides it's a little too early in the match. Not enough damage has been done yet. Switching from Eddie to Matt here. Picking up with a big back suplex. Edge pretty much owning the beginning of this match so far. But Matt has the chair now. Eddie had Edge in a bit of a spider tarantula-like submission. Eddie smacks Matt Hardy over the head with that steel chair. Steel wrapped around Skull. Edge seeing a, an opportunity. Oh, he's stomping. Stomping away at the knee of Matt Hardy, trying to ground him. Make it harder for him to hit his leg drop or any of his high octane offense. Edge, chair in hand, looking to smack Matt Hardy once more. And another huge execution. On Eddie Guerrero, Matt Hardy entering the ring again with a sledgehammer. Edge pro probably having his best chance to win the match right there, ruined by Matt Hardy. Just, just looming in the background there. He, I mean, he's hit, Ed, he's hit Eddie twice with the execution. He could have easily pinned him either of those times. Edge... Took the ref out with the sledgehammer. I mean, there are no rules, Edge, whether it be accidental or not. I, I mean, I, as the GM, I feel like I have to fine him for blatantly hitting the ref to stop the count. He could have very easily stopped the count himself. Hardy now... Dropping Edge with an elbow to the midsection. Edge kind of cooling off a bit here. What's Hardy got in mind here? Maybe a headlock takedown? Nope, nope. Just going to rest hold a little bit here. Get some stamina back up. As Eddie smacking both Edge and Matt Hardy with the chair. What's he got in mind here? Looks like he might be going for another weapon. All three men going for different weapons, but Eddie decided to put the chair back down. Yeah, I figured he might pick it back up after he saw that all both other uh, both the other competitors in this match had weapons. And again, this is false count anywhere. Any any of these men can uh, realistically pin their opponents from anywhere. So if they wanted to fight outside the ring, they definitely could. But it looks like all three men just want to have weapons and fight duke it out in the ring. And we're, I haven't even mentioned yet the fact that Edge introduced barbed wire to the match. I think Edge just hit Eddie, or Eddie just hit Edge with an execution. 
Eddie now looking for a pin. But Edge back to his feet. <laughs> Matt Hardy just got straight obliterated by that chair. Matt Hardy hasn't moved. Edge looking to do it again to Eddie there. Edge ducking under Eddie's assault there and uh, smacking him across the face once more with that chair. And a big DDT to Eddie Guerrero. I believe that was on the chair. Matt looking for a quick pin. Ooh, Hardy now. Trying to build a bit of momentum himself. Edge for the pin, but Hardy kicked out immediately. Hardy beginning to fire up a bit here in the later half of this match. What I assume is the later half of the match anyways. Edge sending Hardy into the turnbuckle here. Grabbing the barbed wire and smacking Hardy across the head with the barbed wire bat. Education on Matt Hardy right on the corner of the ring. This could be it. Eddie's there, though. Dropped the knee and took Edge out of the pinning predicament. <clears throat> Edge now mad at Eddie for causing him to lose possibly his best, po his best position so far for winning this match. Eddie now choking Matt Hardy with that sledgehammer on the outside of the ring. Hardy passing out. Edge stalking Eddie from inside the ring with a steel chair. We all know Edge is a professional at swinging a steel chair. Eddie just picked up the biggest victory so far he's had in SmackDown. Winning the... the he pinned Matt Hardy outside the ring, and that was a brutal match. And he is our new United States Champion here on SmackDown. Edge was there, but he just couldn't... Maybe he didn't have it in him to smack Eddie anymore. Maybe he didn't have the will to keep fighting. Either way, Eddie Guerrero has picked up the United States Championship and is now going to be defending it at the Great American Bash. Alright, match number five... I'm going to go ahead and simulate this one um, because I don't want this video to be too long and I want to see the uh, main event. So we're going to go ahead and simulate this. And D Generation X uh, retaining their WWE Tag Team Championships here tonight. And in our main event, it's going to be Randy Orton, our World Heavyweight Champion, defending against Stone Cold Steve Austin in a Hell in a Cell match. Requested by Steve Austin himself. Randy Orton versus Stone Cold for the World Heavyweight Championship in a Hell in a Cell match. Both men have entered the ring and let's get started. Now, remember, there you, there you see the, the ref locking the cage. Both men inside. R remember, Randy Orton picked up this, this World Heavyweight Championship in a steel cage match where the mission was to try to escape before his opponent. In a Hell in a Cell match, there really is no escape. As you saw, the, the ref locking the Hell, the hell in a Cell door um, right before the match got started. I think that was what Steve Austin wanted in this match. He wanted to, to build an environment to make Randy Orton scared, to make him uh, fear Steve Austin because now he can't run from him. He has to confront him face to face. He can't win this match by escaping a cage. He's locked in with Stone Cold. But something Steve Austin will have to remember is Orton is a slippery man. He can he can get around a lot of offense and and potentially pick up a victory by surprise. So Austin's got to be on his game tonight uh, because there is 
a reason Randy Orton is our World Heavyweight Champion. He didn't win it by just just by escaping the cage. He won it by incapacitating Stone Cold to the point he couldn't get up to get Orton off the top of the cage. Steve Austin now kind of rallying back as he he's had kind of a slow start to this match so far. Orton seemed pretty comfortable so far with the cell environment. Poke to the eye, which is completely legal in this type of match. There are no disqualifications. If either man wants to use a weapon, they can. They can use the cell as a weapon, as many have in the past. Orton just biding his time here with a Russian leg sweep. Kind of a modified Russian leg sweep for Randy Orton. And now tweaking those bad knees of Stone Cold. The, I mean, it's been well documented. The man's had plenty of surgeries on his knees. Also a surgically repaired neck after Owen Hart uh, broke his neck in a big match back in the day. You gotta wonder if Horton's gonna hit an RKO out of nowhere or if he's gonna set it up properly like he has so many times in the past where he beats on the ground and waits for his his opponent to rise Horton with a big belly to belly suplex there or I guess maybe more of a belly to belly body slam Horton picked up for a big back suplex Stone Cold trying to gain some type of momentum here Orton with an RKO down goes Stone Cold. This could be it. Orton could have it right here. One, two. Oh, Stone Cold kicking out just in the nick of time. Imagine he requests this type of match and then loses in three minutes. Steve Austin now with a fireman's carry. Deciding to spin Orton around. Maybe trying to throw off his equilibrium a bit. Orton kind of dazed. Stone Cold might have been looking for the, the stunner right there, but Orton ducked under it. Didn't duck under that punch, though, taking Orton down. Orton looking really strong in the early goings of this match. Honestly thought that he could have potentially picked up that victory right there when he hit that RKO. Talk about, talk about two of the most iconic finishers in the game. RKO and the Stone Cold Stunner. Literally two of the most iconic finishers in the game. One more RKO and that should seal Stone Cold's fate here tonight at Judgment Day. One, two, oh my goodness he kicked out right as the ref's hand touched the mat for three. It doesn't get any closer than that, folks. That was 2.999. Orton now. Looking for some punches in the corner, but Stone Cold chucking Orton back to the ring. Orton with a, a bit of a low blow there, and another RKO, if that's not it. If Stone Cold isn't done after three RKOs, that's it. R Randy Orton picking up the big victory here at Hell in a Cell. Um, at Judgment Day. Orton defending his championship. And you know what that means, folks. We saw it earlier tonight. Batista picking up that victory in the Battle Royal. Eliminating all three other competitors will be Randy Orton's next competitor for the World Heavyweight Championship. All right, what a pay-per-view that was. Now, up next, we are going to get to see the results for the week. Uh, we'll go, we're going to check the power rankings, and we're going to see just how we're doing against Monday Night Raw after our first pay-per-view. 
Here are the results. Fan change for SmackDown. We got plus 825,000 fans. What a show. Raw rating, they got a three star for this, this week. SmackDown rating overall after the pay-per-view, four stars even. That's with SmackDown and the pay-per-view all together. Raw now with 4,230,000 fine fans. SmackDown with 5,770,000 of the best fans in all of wrestling. Let's check some of these results here. Judgment Day was enjoyed by the fans around the world. Uh, the preceding hype that has been built for the main event was tremendous. The match did not disappoint either as Randy Orton prevailed in an exciting ending. The rest of the show was also phenomenal as the pay-per-view received a show rating of four stars. Uh, and still champion um, McFoley is the still the WWE champion. There is a new champion, Eddie Guerrero, picking up the United States Championship at Judgment Day this weekend. Um, a successful title defense. They're talking about Randy, two articles about Randy Orton successfully defending his title. Um, and Bobby Lashley, having lost five matches in a row, wondering if maybe he just isn't cut out for this. We will see what the future holds for Bobby Lashley. Alright, and let's check things out. Uh, this will go away probably after this week, as it was supposed to end after this week. Um... And once that does, we will set up the next rivalry between Batista and Randy Orton heading into the Great American Bash. <coughs> Let's see. Reports. Pay-per-view results. <laughs> Gregory Helms vs. CM Punk got another one star. Great. Fantastic. Uh, Batista winning that battle royal for the, the uh, four-way battle royal. Uh, picking up a three-star match. Uh, then we got match number three of the night. Chavo Guerrero picking up a decidedly upsetting victory over The Undertaker in a two-and-a-half-star match. Uh, the United States Championship match where Eddie Guerrero picked up the win over Matt Hardy and Edge got a four-star. Uh, the Elimination Table Tornado Tag match <coughs> for the WWE Tag Team Championships uh, got us three and a half and a five star banger between Randy Orton and Stone Cold Steve Austin at Hel in Hell in a Cell for the World Heavyweight Championship. What a show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we got SmackDown results. I believe we went over these already at the end of the last episode. Let's check the Power 25 real quick. Mick Foley still at the top somehow. Uh, maybe we just haven't progressed to the next week yet. Uh, Triple H and HBK at number two, Steve Austin at number three, Edge and Orton at number four, Kurt Angle at five, The Rock at six, Batista at eight, RVD at nine, and Rey Mysterio at ten. We still hold eight of the top ten spots, but not that number one spot. So we'll try to eke that out, hopefully. Uh, but if you guys did enjoy today's episode, please be sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. Um... Without further ado, though, I'm going to get out of here, and I'm probably going to record the next episode back-to-back. -back. So, we'll see you guys in the next episode. I'm out.